Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. Well, this week we're planting our onions. So I thought I'd just kind of walk you through the process of what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna raise our onions and shallots this year in a tunnel like we did last year. We had great success with it. And it's nice because the soil is very well prepped. Um, I can control the moisture here in the early spring and everything is gonna kind of work out in, in I think a little more controlled environment. So the first thing I do though, before we get ready to plant, we've got the soil down in the tunnel all prepared. I'll show you some pictures of that when we get down there. But uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our onions and we're gonna trim the tops off. I like to turn, trim off a couple of inches. I guess it amounts to maybe 25% or so of the height of it. And it kind of tends to then focus the growth anew coming out of the center of the actual onion itself and get us a little more robust uh, onion growing faster with less floppy leaves and things of that nature. So let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here's a group that I've already trimmed. And what I've done is I've taken these guys down to about, uh, oh, I took maybe about two inches off the top of these guys. So they're probably an overall height of somewhere around five inch, uh, maybe a little less, but not terribly much than that. And what you can see is left here is, is these guys are a lot standing up straight, so got rid of the floppiness of it. Kind of like when you look at this group over here that I haven't trimmed yet, you can kind of tell that I've got types of uh, leaves here that are going to be, you know, kind of floppy. So I'm going to basically, you know, take off like about the top two to three inches on this and kind of make it even. This group back here is uh, Patterson, uh, our long-term storage onions. And um, the, these groups in here are also long-term storage. We've got our reds, which are Cabernet, and then uh, again, Patterson and Bridger are two types here. And this tray here that I just trimmed, these were the shallots. So I do the same thing to the shallots. I trim them down to get them into size. Um, there are, in each one of these cells, they were multi-sown. So although you see some kind of the earlier fronds that are a little bit, you know, they're kind of desiccating away, What's left is mostly the, the uh, you know, good strong growth. And each one of these cells has maybe uh, three to uh, four onions in them or shallots in them. So the trimmings here, you can use these trimmings for salads or things like that or cooking. Uh, it's almost like a, you know, same thing as like with chives. And so it's actually uh, pretty good stuff to eat. So anyway, uh, that's what I do first. I'll take these guys down after I get them all trimmed and then we'll give them a soak like uh, we do with most of our transplants. We use a uh, leaf mold soil solution soak to kind of help get them established and we'll show you how we're lining things out and where we're putting them. All right, so we're down in the tunnel now and this is the bed we're going to plant on. Now what we did is this is a no-till bed and it had a tarp on it earlier. I raked some of the larger uh, remaining squash refuse off of it. You can kind of see it over here. I'm kind of zooming in on it a bit. And that's just going to be used as a mulch over our potatoes. It's all pretty dried stuff. So it was just a matter of kind of getting the refuse off this part of the bed and putting it over there to take care of that. So this bed is for the onions is going to be approximately about 60 feet long, maybe a little bit longer. And what we're going to do is we're going to plant in three rows. So uh, the idea here is that we're going to have enough room if we need to, to be able to, to use like a collinear hoe if we have any weed problems. Now what we did for soil treatments on the bed is we put on biochar. So we put the biochar on here and I, I ended up putting on roughly about a, a quarter inch across the bed. And then I top dressed that with um, some rock dust. And uh, this is kind of a basalt. It's a basalt basis of it. They call it glacial powder, but basically it's just ground down basalt rock dust from uh, the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to add magnesium and a bit of sulfur and a bit of iron to it. Uh, but mostly it's about the uh, magnesium and then there are some micronutrients in it as well, silicas and things like that, that kind of help out. Um, that was put down a, a roughly for this. I used about 20 pounds of rock dust for uh, the entire bed. So fairly heavy application, but all I had to do then was just water it into the soil and it's really fine and you can't even see uh, what's left of it. 
So planting wise, we're going to be using our dibbler, and this works out really well. It's uh, you know modeled off of uh, kind of the same thing Charles Dowding has been using for years. It's really worked well for us, and you can kind of see the hole is uh, actually we wet the bed down first again before we do the dibbling, so the hole stays nice and wide, and then we can put the individual um, plants into those holes. So I'm not going to get super fancy in terms of measuring it. I just want to make certain that I'm, I've am i got about three rows wide. And that's kind of it. And then we're going to make certain that we go down maybe roughly about seven to eight inches. Somewhere in that neighborhood. And just kind of do it again. And that's kind of how we're leaving it. So we'll get those all the way down the bed, and this, the soil is really soft. This has been no dig now for quite some time. Um, we did use kind of the spading fork just to kind of knock down any big clods that were on top, but uh, really nothing you know, in terms of cracking the soil or anything like that. Um, I just kind of use the rake and my spading fork just to make certain that the, the top is kind of smooth. I did scratch in using um, the collinear hoe the um, biochar before we put the rock application down that's just to kind of get uh, the biochar kind of spread out and maybe chop up some of the pieces into smaller pieces and that that's it you know so from a surface preparation standpoint it took me about maybe an hour total time to uh, you know get the tarps off round them up and then then do um, the applications of biochar scratch it in put the rock dust down water it in and then we were good to go Okay, so what this is right here, this kind of a soupy mix of stuff is uh, leaf mold soil that we harvested last fall. And I took a good handful of it and I've kind of mixed it in here and let it be sit for a minute or two. It's in uh, water. So this is what we're going to uh, immerse our seedlings in to kind of give them a good soak to, to do two things. We get uh, good inoculation of good biology on the roots, plus uh, really helps slip the plants out of the six packs. We did get a question about that a while back about, you know, getting plants out because lots of people have trouble with plastic six packs of the plants actually kind of sticking in there. And if you really give them a good soak, like for three or four minutes until you can see that that the moisture is soaked all the way through the plug, um, they slip out really easy when you just kind of gently turn them over, give them a little tap on the bottom and, and the plants come out. So our trays which we have over here, we're, this is our first couple of trays. I got five trays total. Um, we're gonna try to match things up, make sure I plant all the Bridger onions with the Bridgers and the Pattersons with the Pattersons and then the Reds and then the Shallots uh, to make sure that we've got them kind of like together. So particularly for the yellow onions, I like to kind of keep them uh, separate and that way I can kind of get an idea of how long you know one lasts in storage. What I've found is, is that the Bridgers actually last longer for us than the Pattersons in storage, uh, about an additional month. So that's kind of an interesting note. I'm gonna see if that holds up again this year. Okay, so what I wanted to show you was I slipped one out and you can kind of see that the roots are nice and white. I mean, here's another example of, uh, you know, basically if you just kind of give it a little squeeze at the bottom and the material usually slides right out. So you can kind of see the roots are okay. So I'm just gonna plant it in this one right here. I don't wanna to be too deep. We don't wanna to be too deep with these. We just wanna get it right around the surface of it. And that's it. So then it's just a matter of getting these guys in the various holes and get them all done. I got room on this bed to plant. It looks like after I got my holes dug out, I can get uh, probably almost four of my five trays in here. So I'll just end up putting my extra in my my outdoor garden and but uh, we should have plenty in here because these guys are are multiple um, onions to to a cell block three to four and it really gives you a nice you know onion of about you know slicing size not super great for a hamburger but it works out pretty good for you know cutting up for stews and things like that well we got them all planted and what we ended up here with this row is we ended up with 252 plugs in and we've got uh, 
Well, we got two varieties of storage onions, Patterson and Bridger. We've got Cabernet, which is our red slicer for hamburgers. Actually stores pretty well itself too. We do got, got good storage out of that. And then we have Shallots, Ambition, and Matador in the back, uh, accounting for maybe like the last uh, 24 plugs. So we've got quite a few onions. And if we look at each of these cells, they've got at least probably, um, I can zoom in here a little bit. We've got at least three onions in each one. So if I'm looking at this between the shallots and, and the onions, I'm probably going to end up with somewhere around 750, 700 to 750 onions. And most of the onions, and, and the, particularly the shallots, were quite large too, but most of the onions were good size. They're three to four inch in diameter. And uh, so it, it'll get us enough onions uh, and, and shallots to carry us through till the next year. We're still working on last year's crop. We're kind of going through the shallots now at this point. One thing I did find is that the shallots stored really well. Um, we've had no kind of softness or rot in them yet at this point, and uh, we're already near the end of March. So these guys were all started around the 7th of January, and we're just getting them in the ground today, and today is March 22nd. So um, they got a good three months to grow. They'll bulb up, and we'll typically our harvest is in uh, mid to late July. So it all kind of works out pretty good. So the last step I'm going to do is just water them in. You can kind of see you got the hose laid out here and uh, put the drip lines back down. And then we're uh, done with this project. So one of the things in spring that, that we do is, is we always try to get as much early starting as we can in the tunnel. Uh, we've always done that with flowers and we're trying to move that same way with the veg. We did plant our potatoes. I think I did a video on that last week. And they're not up yet, but uh, they probably will be shortly. And when I look around, some of the things that we've got going are the kale and the uh, greens that we planted last winter are kind of near in their end. So we're gonna be looking at final harvest on those guys. And then we'll be able to have those spots open up for our next round of greens. We still got some uh, root crops we want to kind of put in we want to get some early hackerai turnips those are those beautiful little white turnips they're very sweet great in salads and uh, probably within the next few weeks we can start planting stuff outside i do have about um, 12 six packs left of onions that i'm going to plant outside in our upper garden um, they'll they'll just mature probably a little later a couple of weeks later than than they will here down in the tunnel and what I found is the ones in the garden, for whatever reason, I've always, I've got bigger onions down here in the tunnel than I did in the garden, which I'm not really sure I understand why exactly, but, but kind of plant them on the same technique, but it just seems like they kind of take, uh, I don't know, they just, they just don't get as big up there. So it must be something missing in my soil. Anyway, that's it for this week. Got more projects coming up as we go. Been making a lot of biochar too, so be sure to check out those videos if you guys are getting rid of your prunings from wintertime. It's a great way to get a soil amendment, so be sure to check those out. We'll talk with you later. Stay safe. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.